Greetings from David's room in Bakriani, Georgia, in Europe. Here's a little update on how things have been going um, since the last video. In our quest to film David's life and turn it into a documentary. So things have been moving very slowly. We've come across a few challenges, a few things that slowed us down, but we're seeing that with every challenge comes a silver lining, a blessing that is hidden beneath. All you have to do is dig a little bit. So as I mentioned in the other video, one of our challenges was that we don't know anything about filming, documentary making, anything. Um, but we have been learning every single day. We've, we've been on YouTube University, learning everything that we can. We have divided this journey and we are taking the smaller steps and we're trying to fit it into this logical sequence of learning. Um, and it's been actually a lot of fun. So that's great. Um, We've also found that there are so many people who are so happy to help. And we very, very gratefully are accepting all their advice, all their suggestions. My friend who I mentioned in my previous video, the one with the brilliant mind, actually called me before I had a chance to even message him to ask him for advice. And we have been exchanging information on which apps we use, how we do the editing, the, gadget, the gadgets he uses, how he goes around his filming and editing uh, process. So that's been really, really good. Also super great to catch up. Even people that we don't know who've heard that we are on this quest to memorialize David's life have been offering their help via friends. So we don't even know them and they've been very, very generously taking time out from their daily schedules just to give us some advice. And we've been doing our best to, to not overburden them with, with questions. And I also find that the more you try to learn on your own, um, the, the better it sinks in. So, so that's been working out for everyone so far, I believe. So the other challenge that we came across is that we, we can't travel. So we can't go to the locations that David was at, um, meet people face to face, hug them, talk to them and exchange the love and the healing. It's not just about stories, what we're doing here. So the thought of that was quite a bit of a challenge. But then again, the silver lining, when you think about it a little bit more, this is the way the world is at the moment. We can't travel, people can't come in, and but we have technology. Thank God for that. We have internet, we have great connections, we have tech. Um, everyone has access to some sort of technology that will allow us to communicate with them. Um, and this is just going to make us get more creative and, and when we perfect the process of interviewing people from a distance, it really opens up so many more avenues and, and, and ways of living and, and doing this and carrying out this project. So I believe this is also going to be a blessing. So just like we can't go anywhere, people can't come in to visit us either. Now this is also a challenge because the tech that we have in this country is limited. Uh, and it's also not like in the States where you just click something on Amazon and it's at your door next day or two days later. There's a limit to what we can order and the camera that we want does not exist here um, or anywhere close by that we can actually go to. And we can't go anywhere anyway because if we step foot out of the country, we can't come back in because of the restrictions. But saying that, again, a blessing. There is another camera that we did find that is only two and a half hours away in Tbilisi in the capital and we can have it tomorrow, which we will actually. We're hoping to take a little road trip and go there, which is something I love to do. It's two and a half hours to go, two and a half hours to come back, but I, it's just such a nice way to get away. My husband and I, we always download podcasts and and we always stop midway in our favorite little cafe and have a snack and a coffee and all that stuff. Um, so we're going to hopefully do that tomorrow. And this camera that we get, once we do get it, it'll be a great second camera once we get the first camera that we want, which we will, because these restrictions are not going to go on forever. Um, so we are looking forward to that. That's another great thing. This other camera will allow us to dip our feet into the world of filming, and also it will allow us to interview the people that are actually here who knew David. And it'll be a great starting point. So that's the blessing of that. 
The other challenge we have is social media. I have been more and more mindful of my, of my time in social media. It can be really time consuming, but I found over the past few months, and I've heard this from a lot of my friends also, people are getting more and more turned off social media. It's just all the politics in it, all the censorship, and all the propaganda is such a turn off. So whilst I do love to get the news of my friends, we, I have just organically found myself stepping back from social media quite a bit. Um, so saying that social media is such a blessing to have. I get so much of my alternative health information from the, there, well, the ones that have not been censored yet. And um, it's also a great place to network, to keep in touch with people, to get to know people. So we're gonna have to kind of go back to that and make time and mind space to allow social media back into our lives, my life. I shouldn't say our because my husband is not on any kind of social media, nothing. He doesn't even own a cell phone, to be honest. Um, he works differently in this world. So yes, I, I would be the one who would be having to put time towards that. Um, so that needs to be incorporated into our lives. Um, so that's another something that we do need to think about. Um, and I think that the way we're going to probably do that is just try to schedule everything so that we are able to get back to people, get back to messages, get back on to people with comments and, uh, and not allow it to take too many hours of our day. So hopefully that will allow us the blessing of being able to better organize ourselves. The other challenge we have, I have, is that is there is a voice that can tell this story really, really well. This is the voice of my husband, Indy, David's eldest brother, um, from the same mother and father. Probably one of the people who knew David best. Yeah. And, um, and again, this is not discounting anyone else's relationship with David because he was very multifaceted. He had many, many different hobbies, different phases of his life. And there were so many people there that um, he was very deeply connected to, even when he knew people just for a little while. I feel like David was this force where people were just going along in their lives and they would come to a point where they would meet David and they wouldn't realize that while their lives were going was going this way, that there's another path they can take. And David would often introduce them to that path. So even if it was a short little encounter, just a short uh, conversation or just a project they had to work on together, their lives would be very effective and their whole trajectory would change. Got to jump with Dave on a tandem at Skydive Utah in July 2018. So funny, once he started skydiving, that was all he ever talked about, and we always ended up watching skydive videos with him every time we hung out. He convinced me to face my fears and FaceTimed with me so many times before I finally got to take my first jump. He told me my life would change in so many ways. And he was right. Miss you, Dave. Thank you for introducing me to so many rad things. David Wall was such a dear friend, and I would never have left Utah to chase my dreams and become my best self had it not been for his encouragement and generosity. We met during a transitional period of my life, but I wouldn't be the woman I am today had his light not been a part of my journey. I feel truly blessed to have known Dave. So there are many, many people who have so many uh, stories of David. And I believe that if, if you ask David, who would you want to tell your story? That one of the dominant voices he would want to be voicing his soul, his path, his heart, his spirit, his thoughts, would be his eldest brother, Indy, my husband. I feel that they were so similar the way they thought even when they were not in contact for a while, the things that they did was, they, it was in parallel. 
It's very, very uncanny. Um, their thought process, their analytical process was very, very, very similar. Their interests were very similar. I feel they were very, very connected on a soul level beyond what just the connection that brothers have has been. But Indy is the most private person I have ever met in my whole life. He is ridiculously private. He is very behind the scenes, very behind everything. And project. He enjoys being behind the scenes, telling me what to do and how to do everything. But, um, but I really would want his voice to be in here. And that's gonna take a miracle. But I believe in miracles. And I believe that David orchestrates a lot, even though he's not here. So let's see how it goes. As always, we will keep you posted. So stay tuned.